Hey, it's Marco Fujimura I'm back in my Princeton studio. And today uh, I was watching uh, business news for some reason, and they were all talking about chat GPT, uh, this artificial intelligence mechanism that uh, uh, they were saying would threaten creative fields uh, the most because of the ability for uh, image processing uh, to be uh, to be able to quickly imitate what uh, artists have been doing. And so I just wanted to address this issue, which I have been thinking about. Um, uh, my brother is a deep learning expert. So I remember having this conversation with him about several years ago. We were actually, uh, he's, he's a season ticket holder to uh, San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. So. Uh, San Francisco Symphony so, uh, uh, and Opera. So we were um, going to uh, this uh, concert of Messiah, Handel's Messiah. And on the way there, we had this really interesting conversation. This was really about three, four years ago. But even back then, um, people were talking about AlphaGo and all the advancement of uh, AI. Um, which I think is a misnomer. It's not really artificial intelligence. It's really pattern matching uh, capabilities of machine algorithm being able to very quickly process millions of data points and which chat GPT, uh, GPT is able to do as well. Um, so this has prompted me asking my brother, uh, so what do you think about all this is, is art going to be uh, in existence in five to 10 years. And he looked at me kind of quizzically and he said, well, what you do uh, is going to be quite fine because um, as you can tell, I, I am using <clears throat> somatic materials like malachite here, um, azurite, uh, gold hand, uh, woven silk. Um, I have been very intentional in trying to keep Japanese traditions uh, alive. And uh, even through the work of Academy Kintsugi, we have been talking about somatic knowledge. My book, Art and Faith, uh, talks about that as well. And what we know to be human, uh, deeply human qualities of handmade materials and pulverized mineral slow art is not in any way threatened by uh, all these technological advancements, but in fact, it is enhanced because the uniqueness of the quality of art. I was uh, just speaking to a curator, uh, an important curator, uh, museum curator in Japan, and he also said that as a curator, he, he doesn't see this as a threat because um, he, in his mind, digital, images do not have the enduring qualities uh, as much as something that is painted or something that is physically created. Um, and so even if you use digital media to create uh, actual physical objects, that will be better uh, in the long run because uh, human experience and human uh, understanding of uh, deeper understanding of uh, presence and knowledge is is very much what we keep going back to. Uh, what we notice in a lot of the early NFT phenomenon and what has happened in recent times is that people move on uh, from image to image to image. The, the, the attention span is shorter and, and uh, the successful artists are creating more and more in order to satisfy the demand of uh, <clears throat> their audience. And with art, uh, such as these behind me, uh, what you're talking about is slowing down to experience it. And Van Gogh's Starry Night, uh, no matter how many times you copy it over and over digitally, it's not going to replace the original. Now, technology is getting better. Uh, 3D machines are getting better. And you can probably simulate the, um, e e even the impossible effect of Van Gogh's paintings. But that still leaves out this possibility, uh, leaves behind this possibility that the original still matters 
right? That, that you have to mimic the original in order to get something that is perhaps enduring uh, to create an immersive experience and so forth. So the original paintings is even more valued. Uh, in a digital virtual reality as these images uh, proliferate in, in culture. So what I'm saying is this, and what I asked my brother is, is uh, so uh, what does that mean? And he told me that I, I have nothing to worry about because what I do is so ingrained in the materiality and somatic slowness of the, the process of painting. But he also said, uh, <laughs> you... <laughs> You have this thing called faith. Um, my brother does not share that faith with me, but um, um, he mentioned that uh, this enigmatic reality of faith is something that the machine world cannot understand. Um, and in ensuing conversation with them, I discovered that um, it's really, as I said, not artificial intelligence, but it's, it's pattern ma matching. Uh, capabilities. So the, the computers and, and processing can take millions of data and coalesce them in some cohesive fashion and, and chat GPD is, is very much about that, is, is creating a database um, that can uh, mimic what you're asking the machine to do. And it's important to ask the machine to do uh, what you wanted to do. And so I look at it uh, like a tool, uh, like a brush. A brush is a tool. It's technology. It's techne um, that we use with our hands to accomplish certain tasks. Uh, any of technology is like that. Now, the, the paradigm shift, of course, is that these machines are capable of way more than we can control. So there is an aspect of unexpected surprises that is, is, is a box that is full of mystery now uh, because of the complexity of uh, pattern matching that is constantly going on and, and uh, uh, kind of uh, neurology that is developing within the network to generate something new into the picture. That, that is uh, certainly something that's new. But on the other hand, uh, if we understand that such growth and, and expansion of technology is something that we as artists have always known about, that, that in, in some ways our hands can create mystery uh, that has, in a sense, a life of its own. The artists always believe that. The words have power. Poets will trust that. Artists will trust that the paint has language of stone. And I always talk to my painting. I always listen to my paintings tell me where the painting wants to go. So in that sense, artists have a language to deal with the power and mystery of what is happening. And, and also, if you are a person of faith, then person of faith, you know, you are bringing in this invisible reality of faith, right? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, Hebrews 11. So if it is a substance of things hoped for, the critical understanding of that is that hope is fundamentally the bedrock of what we create into the future. So if we have such a technology that is um, showing its, itself to be more powerful than we ever imagined, then our hope also has to be enlarged and challenged to grow so that the future will be determined by the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So this is a, obviously a challenge that we are faced with. Um, but uh, in my conversation uh, on the drive up to see Messiah's handle, uh, handles Messiah, um, I thought about, um, and, and after the performance, this magnificent performance, um, I turned to my brother and said, oh, that, that cannot be done by a machine. And so this is something that 
uh, we will be discussing, I'm sure. But um, in a business world where uh, they see a threat to the creative field, um, I actually see an opportunity. So I hope to uh, share some more about that in my ensuing conversations, maybe with Julia, maybe with my wife, Hajan, uh, on, on, on this channel. But for now, um, keep making, keep creating, trust your hands uh, to make into the new. And this is Marco Fujimura, uh, almost live from my Princeton studio. <laughs>